Hello everyone, my name's Bob Mitch and welcome back to some more Star Citizen. It's Sunday and seeing as CIG are having a well-earned weekend off, I figure it's time to take a pause as we prepare for the next round of updates for the PTU and take stock of what's been added since the 3.3 PTU came out. If you're not personally playing the PTU or you're waiting for it to hit the live alpha, then this should give you a little prep as to what you have to look forward to. First, most importantly, is object container streaming, which can debatably be described as the beginning of CIG's silver bullet patches, which will improve performance across the board for everyone by changing the way your PC streams game data in and out as you play. It's still only the client-side first revision, but already it's leaps and bounds FPS-wise above 3.2 and every previous version of the game. From the faces being pulled, you can see we've had face and voice over IP brought to us as well, we now have the ability to video call people whilst using our webcams to grimace and gurn at our friends, whilst using in-game cons to shout at them. We can also take space selfies, as you can see, so take that as you will. We have new ships to play with. The new revisions of the Mustangs have been pushed out, and I have to say I didn't really like the old ones. These new ones have grown on me a great deal, even if it's only to shove as many people as we can into a Mustang Beta for giggles. We've also got the Constellation Phoenix, the shiny white luxury Tora variant of the Connie, which brings us a stupid amount of alcohol for one spaceship, as well as fish tanks, comfy space beds, and still has room to shove a vehicle in its cargo bay with room to spare. The major downside being the ship still only has one toilet, so best to keep an interstellar on-call plumber on speed dial should the parties get too rowdy. We have the Hammerhead. The massive damn near invincible corvette gunship that when fully manned gives a giant middle finger to anything it doesn't like the look of by a violent fire and brimstone. That is, if it doesn't just cut it in half by ramming it first. We have the new variants of the Tumbrel Cyclone ground vehicles. Aside from the generic pickup version, we've got a turreted version, a scanning version, an anti-air version and a racing version pictured here. The armed ones are great for skirmishes and just fun in general, and the racing one is essentially a giant Batmobile thanks to its OP turbo that shoots flames like Tim Burton's Batmobile. We had a surprise dropped on us at CitizenCon in the form of the Valkyrie, a new dropship which is quickly becoming a very distinctive favourite for a lot of people, giving the ability to speedily move bodies and vehicles in and out of places fast, with some pretty substantial firepower to boot. To go hand in hand with the Valkyrie, we've also had the first revision of FPS AI added, which means we now have NPCs that have the ability to shoot back. They vary, sometimes they're not very clever and sometimes they have an aimbot, but we have them to play with now and they're only going to improve as we go further forward. Also added was the first of many truck stops. These modular stations are set to be out across the game as rest and refuel points for everyone travelling throughout the game's universe. They can be configured for a myriad of roles, offering different hangar, lobby and store configurations depending on CIG's whim. Right now, we only have the one and it's simply just to show them off and test them, although the stores in there do have stuff for sale. Sadly, there's only a few limited options for things at the moment, a bit like going to a fuel station for a sandwich and them only having all the fillings that you don't like. The biggest surprise outside dropped, however, obviously, was the ability for us to now buy ships in-game. We've had Teacher's Ship Shop added to the customs area at Levski for us to visit, as well as 5 million UEC added to everyone's wallets to go and spend on ships for testing. There's a limited bunch there, but they are purchasable in-game, which will now add a legitimate gameplay loop for players in earning money to buy ships with. The cost of these is likely to change with economy revisions, but they aren't cheap, which is ultimately a good thing. 
We thought to start with that once you bought them there may only be one time use, however a couple of bugs were squashed and we can now claim them on insurance, making them truly own ships. There we go then guys, that's what we have so far. There's still more to come and as November creeps up on us we've got the beauty of Hurston and all its moons to look forward to with the mid-quarter additions. Thank you for watching, thank you for staying with me and I'll be sure to keep pushing out the update videos. I will see you all next time.